Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pick to cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. What's up, guys? Where are you you watching from? Happy Monday. Uh, Excited to uh, get this show started. We're going to have a little bit of a thick hair theme today. Uh, So we're going to be sharing a video with Ryan Teal. um, And then hopefully he'll be on here to answer some of those questions. (laughs) We've literally been chatting. I had no issues for like the last half an hour. So uh, it's a bummer that he's hearing that echo, but uh, we'll get it figured out. Um... Cool. Love seeing it. All you guys have to do is just share the show. Share it for me um, so that we can get a lot of people on here watching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll Ryan's video in a second. Uh, Before I do that, I want to encourage you guys to download the FSE Now app uh, that is available. Um, We got a ton of new stuff coming up. So I'm going to play the app video for you. Go download the app um, as soon as this show is over. Uh, But here it is. Check it out. back i'm here <laughs> is it yes. sound better now <laughs> oh much better I, I thought i was having a seizure <laughs> <laughs> all right good you know we didn't call this show manic monday for nothing so uh something had to happen you know <laughs> so what's up ryan yeah. how are you i'm really good how are you it's been a while yeah it's uh it's been too long uh you know ryan was back in the studio when was that probably a year and a half ago maybe even a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was probably. a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a blast. I didn't have as much of a beard then. <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, and you guys are going to see that in the video that we play. Uh, so, like I said, today we're going to have like a thick hair kind of theme uh, of the show, just cutting thick hair. Uh, Ryan did a cool technique back in uh, a year and a half ago in the studio. Uh, so I can't wait to share that video with you guys. And then he'll take some questions from you guys as well. Um, and Ryan's been, I mean... Those are the people that don't know you that are on this show uh, here. Um, you know, you've done it all. Like you've literally had every yeah. job in the beauty industry. So, <laughs> you know. I've been fired from most. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, uh, what, what my question to you would be, what, which is your favorite job so far that you've done? Um, you know, I think that what I, I love the most um, is kind of what I've been doing the last say five or six years. I was never really good behind the chair. I mean, I'd miss it. So about five or six years ago, I stopped working behind the chair and I was like, just educating hairdressers. Yeah. Um, and I did miss being behind the chair. I do miss the the clientele, but what I love the most is really working with, with hairdressers and, you know, either coaching or, you know, one-on-one hair education and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's really been my favorite. And that's what, you know, I love the hairdresser more than I love clients. I, I always say that I have, there's, only two types of people I like it's um, hairdressers and bartenders and everybody else. I really just don't care about what they do for a living. You know? <laughs> like, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll through this technique. It's 15 minutes long. So, I mean, obviously if, uh, can you see the chat Ryan uh, anywhere? I'll, I'll feed you the question. It just says, yeah. Okay, cool. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I'll feed you some questions, but if you can see it too, that's cool. Um, and, okay, but we're going to cool. roll the video, uh, and, you know, you guys can learn for a bit and then we're going to come back and hang out with Ryan right after. So here it is. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I have a special guest, Ryan Teal. Ryan Teal has a YouTube channel called Hairdressing 
wait, can we just talk about this real quick? <laughs> 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 this is the best part about playing these videos. Like I haven't actually, I remember this video, but I haven't, I haven't previewed it yet. And for all of you guys watching, we look younger or I look, I look a lot healthier. <laughs> I look healthier and younger in this. I wasn't ready for that uh, that intro. All right, let's let's continue this. <laughs> I, I, I look like I look like Father Time now, so you know, I, I feel like really old. Yeah, your 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 beard was super red then. <laughs> right. It was. It was. Coming. All right, here, here it is, guys. Going going back. According to me, and uh, so I wanted to share that with you guys. The link is in the description below, so go subscribe to him. Also, he did a haircut for you guys for the Free Son Education channel. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Ryan, what did you do? Matt, I had a great time. It was, it was fun coming in and doing this. And thank you very much for having me. This haircut is all for that woman with huge hair, who I like to call Chewbacca. All she ever wants is, she just wants the hair. Instead of going straight out like this, like she usually does, she always has to grow the hair out long. All she ever wants, though, is she wants a cute little bob. But she can't have that because God gave her so much hair. So what we did was we did a really quick little haircut where I did what I call pleating and I, I did two disconnections. So one in the basement and then one what I call the main floor. And I just folded over, cut it and laid it down and then laid the, the disconnection over the top of that. And what that does is it compresses that big hair of life ponytail from here to there and then to there. So really what I did was I took that ponytail and then just cut it off by two thirds almost. So when she goes and brushes it out or when she styles it or or dries it, it's gonna dry in two thirds less time. And then through the roof, I did a really quick little technique, which we used to call volumetrics, and we bring it over the top, and I show you three different ways to cut it, but we do like a quick little uh, increased layer that goes from short to long. It's a super easy haircut, and you can use it tomorrow, you know, behind the chair. Yeah, and that's the thing, guys. I've seen the comments over and over again you wanna see uh, haircut for thick hair. So this is the one. Hope you guys enjoy it. We're gonna get started with the step-by-step. -step. Here we go. So it's important to start with the foundation of this haircut. So I'm gonna cut this all in a 1E because really the, the whole haircut has to do with the interior of the hair. So when we usually cut the foundation, we usually cut with our fingers, you know, holding the hair, and we see a line like that. We see the top of our fingers and that gives us that straight line. When in reality, if you use a comb, you can see what is truly straight. You see that the green comb is straight and horizontal, where the black comb is actually tri uh, uh, diagonal, and it's going to give us make it long on the right-hand side as opposed to the left-hand side, so it'll be a crooked haircut. So let's just go ahead and bring our comb straight down with very little tension, and I'm gonna use a seven-inch scissor to maintain balance and make sure that I'm cutting a nice straight line. And if you notice that when I'm cutting, I'm doing kind of a sewing machine effect, so I'm inserting the scissor and then pulling out as I cut. And the reason why is it is a Japanese scissor. So Japanese scissors are meant to push hair away from the blade. So if you pull back just slightly, you'll be able to maintain a nice even cut and pull all that hair back into your cutting line. So just working right over the ear, making sure there's no tension on that length. So now we're gonna start, we're, we're gonna separate the hair from the front to the back in, at indentation. And then I'm gonna go down into what I call the basement or some people call the the occipital or the nape and I'm, for now I'm just going to section that that front out by braiding it really quickly just to keep it nice and orderly and tidy and my hands move really fast when I braid you, you should try and see if you can move your hands that fast as well so now I'm in my basement sectioning all the rest of the hair away and I'm going to take a profile parting and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a profile parting and I'm gonna lift that hair straight up. Now tell me, is it you and me forever, oh, 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 or is it just a hit and run? So right up against that scalp, straight up against that scalp, I'm looking for the length. There's my length guide right there. So that is the length. I can cut everything else out legally. So there I am, I'm gonna cut that length or the, that width out. So when I drop it, if I take a cross section of hair, I'll see that I get a mirrored representation of the nape. Since the nape curves in like that, it'll curve out like that in the back, giving us width, but getting rid of all of that weight in that basement. So I'm gonna do it again on the side. I'm gonna cut it square. Again, straight up now tell me, is it you and me forever? That is a Paula Abdul reference. And cut. Gonna pass the duchy upon the left-hand side and cut the other side. 
elbow up to give me my protractor or my angle and cut. Now this is very, very important. You need to braid out your disconnection. That disconnection must be braided because you do not want it to touch anything else on that hair. You do not want it to get involved in any of the other floors of your haircut because you will cut a major hole that is unrepairable. So let's go ahead and cut into our main floor. So I'm sectioning out that roof and I'm, I'm sectioning the main floor, leaving the main floor down and you can see that I'm just clipping out of the way that whole top of the head. Some people call it above parietal. Combing, making sure everything is nice and tidy. Giving it a little twirl and a clip. I'm gonna go back into that main floor. So she has a whole lot of hair. So I'm gonna put a second pleat in. I'm gonna start at pro uh, profile again. And if you look, I'm really cutting. So that's what I cut my length. All I'm doing is keeping my hand as if I'm shifting that hair straight up to cut my length just high. So I'm taking a, a horizontal parting, but I'm holding it vertical. There's my length guide, the same length guide that I had from down below. There's my length guide and cut. So now that length is gonna hang over that basement and collapse that, that hair. So as Chewbacca's hair starts to take off because of the layering, the weight is gonna make it lay back down. So that's gonna, what's gonna keep her hair straight up and down or like vertical hair. So I'm, I'm going to over direct back into a square. So square layers or square graduation, if you will. Straight up again, looking for my guide and cut. Straight up, now tell me, is it you and me forever? And cut. So now I'm going to go ahead and braid that main floor out of the way. Just because I do not want that to get involved on any other part of the haircut. Now, through the front, I want to maintain a little bit of weight through the front. So when I pleat it, I'm going to pleat it back towards the upper left-hand side. So I'm going to try and pull away from what I want to keep. I'm looking for the length guide again, same thing I did on the side, and cut. So I want to keep the weight there, so I'm, I'm just going to pull away from what I want to keep. So I want to pull away from that hair right in front of the chin. I'm then going to braid that hair out of the way. And I use a braid because that secures it a lot safer than just a clip. So it's like safe hair cutting. And cut the other side, and then braid. I like to use precautionary tactics. So now through the roof, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna section her hair back where her part was, where I originally had her part. And I'm going to clip uh, those clips out of the way and I took a little clue right in the front of her hair. And that's gonna give me where her shortest hair piece is or the shortest layer is going to be. I'm gonna pull the hair up over the top of the head, all the way over, right against that scalp. And I'm going to utilize the scalp or the skull to give me the curve of her layers. Because we are gonna cut like an increased layer. Now there you are, I'm going to increase it from short to long. There it could be a, a flat layer or I can do a, um, what is it, a decreased layer as well. So coming over to the other side. Now one thing that you wanna remember is that what you do on the other side, that's going to be the shortest layer on your other side when it goes back home. So where you cut it, when I'm cutting the hair from the right hand side and I pull it over to the left, where I cut it, it's going to hit on that same spot on the right hand side. Combing it out and we're gonna see a really nice little face frame right underneath her chin, right where I want it to be. And do the same thing on the opposite side. You can see my clips protecting my hair so I don't get any of that hair involved because I don't want you know, to, to you know, cut a hole. There's my little clue. I'm gonna come straight down. I'm gonna increase it from short to long and cut. Come up over the top in the back as well. Catch a little bit from what I previously cut and cut. And in reality, there you have it. That is essentially a 12 section increased layered haircut. And there it is cross-sectioned. You can see that round, and that round of that shape is coming from the round of the skull. I have a really hard time cutting round shapes, 
but if you use the shape of the skull, you'll get a nice round shape. And there is the pleats working. There are two huge holes in the haircut that are very scary. So don't have your, your model do handstands with this haircut. But when her hair comes back, you can see all of that hair lay right over the top. So now let's go ahead and blow dry the hair using an Ergo brush from my buddy Robert. And I'm just going to smooth it out quickly with an Ergo brush or with a brush. I like to spray my hairspray, like a dry hairspray, on the brush as I work. Because I feel like if you work hairspray in, you don't spray it on, you get the memory of the hairspray without any of the crunch. Just working that spray in. Making sure it gets nice and hot. So it smooths all of our ends and all, all of the, the little flyaways. You know, you want to treat hair almost like shrink wrap. If you, if you heat it up to get it in place and then you let it cool down, it'll keep it there all day. So through the roof, I'm going to pull all that hair forward. Back in my day, we used to teach our clients to, to flip your hair over. And when they did it, it looked like crap. But when we did it, it looked magically delicious. So I do the same thing, but they don't flip their hair over. They, they just pull all of their, their hair right in front of their face to get that root movement going forward. So when they push it back, it's going to have volume, but not super huge volume. Like, you know, like she's from Texas, you know, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. Up over the top, always reloading my brush with hairspray, straight up, and then twice, and then three times a lady, heat it up, give it a little tuck in a roll, and then drop it, like it's hot, so once, twice, three times a lady. And then once it's all in place, I'll usually give it a little misting of hairspray. So now I want to show you my, my personalization techniques. When, when I personalize, I'm not just randomly personalizing. I'm trying to recolor the hair. So I was pointing out where the dark spots are. You want to hit the dark spots and make it lighter like the light spots. So you're actually recoloring the hair as a hair cutter. So there you have it. Dark, light, dark you're not gonna hit the light spots. You're only gonna make the dark spots like the light spots. And I'm gonna do a little technique I like to call slap cutting. I don't know the real name for it. If you know the real name for it, if you could just write it on a piece of paper and throw it away for me, that would be great. But we're just gonna slide the, the scissor in and then I, <laughs> as I pull it out from the hair, the gravity shuts my blade, not my actual finger. So the, the gravity does all the work, my wrist does all the work, my thumb doesn't move at all. So work all the way to the front, really, you know, lightening that texture up. There you have it, dark and then light. And I could go in and do a deep parallel point cut, but that hair wants to bend over to the side. So it's a lot easier to do this little slap cutting technique for us. And there you have it again. That's the technique right there. It's very important to grow a really long beard while cutting as well. I mean, that will make you, a, if you don't have a long beard, um, you need to get a neck tattoo. That'll make you a better hair cutter as well. <laughs> so I'm just going to go right around the back. You see where I want a texture. My elbows are up. That's giving me my, my cutting angle. Your cutting angle, angle doesn't come from your wrist. Your cutting angle comes from your elbow. Your elbow becomes a protractor. You always want to have that elbow up or, or tilted because that's going to give you that straight line. You just see me like adjusting my angle to, to cut it. Now I'm going to do a little technique that I like to call whittling. And I'm just going to leave my scissors in one spot. I'm going to pull the hair into my scissor. So I'm not finding a guide anymore. I'm pulling the hair into the scissor. I'm keeping the scissor in one position, and I'm just pulling all that hair into it. And so the scissor itself becomes its, its own guide. And I just open and close it in that one angle. The higher I hold that scissor, the more graduation I'm going to have, or eventually I'll get to layers. So I want to actually kind of etch out like a really cool little line there by keeping my scissors at that almost 45 degree angle. I am using a texturizing sear, shear. It's like a medium tooth texturizing shear with a little bit of a rounded bottom. And that allows me to slip the hair out or to slip that scissor out so it doesn't you know, get stuck or <coughs> on you.
and I do keep my hand right on top of my client's head. Just pushing it out of her face. I think it gives her kind of a, a cute little, like, almost like a, a modern-day Jennifer Aniston look. You know, like uh, Jennifer Aniston, like, in Meet the, uh, what was it, Meet the Millers. There you have it. A quick little increased layered haircut. I hope you liked it. All right, guys, so if you liked that cut, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to go to Ryan's channel, Hairdressing According to Me, and subscribe there as well. The link is in the description. But here's the cut. Make sure you share this video with all of your hairdresser friends out there. And also, you're on Instagram, right? I'm on Instagram as Ryan underscore Teal. There you T -E -A -L, go. T-E-A-L, like the color. And all of his pictures are sideways. Go check it out. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. See ya. <laughs> oh, God. That's hilarious. Oh, funny stuff, Ryan. Funny stuff. I, I, I think it would have been really funny if we could have, uh, like, talked over the top of it, almost like a mystery science theater the whole time. I actually... I had that same thought the whole time and it would only work with you though. <laughs> like, like I can't, I can't have a different guest and really make that work. But with you, uh, I love watching the chat. Just people like blowing up and laughing and it's fun because that never happens. So, uh, very cool. Very cool. So, uh, there were a couple questions, uh, throughout the chat. Let me see if I can, um, So Nicole asked, "Where so else?" I got, do you I got do a question. Yeah, yeah, go, okay, go, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, so, so since this whole Corona thing, let's go right back to the, the education. Since this whole Corona yeah. thing, Matt, have you yeah. put on regular pants? <laughs> yeah, I wear the same exact outfit every day. Like I, I literally, <laughs> okay, I have forty of the same T-shirt. I have five of the same pair of jeans, same shoes. I don't. I look the same every day. So yes. Okay, because uh, I haven't put pants on since since I've been quarantined. So I'm sitting here, like, in in my underwear, talking to everybody, that all your fans. And I feel so weird that I should go put pants on. So let's go ahead and talk about education. Sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're fine. Wait, wait okay. did you see Did you see that? Um, It was, like, Good Morning America or something, and they had the guy come on, and he's literally giving, like, the news, and you can see the white of his leg. Like, he has a suit jacket. He has a suit jacket, and then the, a white leg just hanging out. They, they didn't crop didn't it that. right. Yeah, that's nice. awesome. <laughs> so um, she says, uh, Nicole's asking, where else do you do education? Uh, I do education everywhere, pretty much. I mean, I could come to your salon. This last year, I um, I kind of made a pretty brash generalization uh, on social media earlier, th uh, actually really early this year, where I personally wasn't going, I didn't want, I don't want to charge for education anymore. Um, yeah. I love your whole idea with free salon education. And so my whole thing now is I'm trying really hard not to have to, to charge anybody that if I go into their salons or whatever, I would rather have um, a salon owner fly me in, pay, pick up my flight and pick up my hotel um, and then not charge them a day rate. Um, just because I don't, I don't feel like I want to, I don't want to charge for education anymore. I'd rather charge a manufacturer for sponsorships as opposed to, I'm yeah. charging it, you know, so I, what I'm to really answer the question, um, I could do it in your salon. I could do it anywhere across the country. And, and uh, I haven't done anything since the, the quarantine, but um, yeah, I, I do it pretty much anywhere. I feel like um, that's a good conversation to get into a little bit because I have obviously mm -hmm. um, basically spend every day trying to figure out how to not charge hairdressers and how to charge manufacturers. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think we grew up in the same kind of world in the industry of like, we went out and did free classes for salons, but then manufacturers paid mm -hmm. us to do that. And then there's a, a point when they manufacturers kind of stopped doing that. Um, and I think yeah. that it's a tricky world now because now we got this influencer thing where manufacturers do pay uh, people that have an audience, but at the same time, you know, it's still a weird thing because you have really talented educators like yourself that you have a pretty good following actually at this point, mm -hmm. like, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, you have yeah. a dedicated core audience, but a lot of people there's talented, uh, educators out there that don't have an audience and manufacturers won't pay them, but they'll pay somebody that has a huge audience that isn't great at teaching. And, you know, we've talked about that before and, and 
I don't want the, you know, neither of us want to get into a conversation of like, this guy's not good and this guy's good, but, um, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a talent and a skill and you saw it through that video. Talented educators can make great videos because you've been yeah. in a class and you've made those references to the music, to the songs, to all that stuff, you know? So like when I got into making videos, it wasn't hard because I already knew all the questions people were asking without them asking them, you know, and you've exactly. done exactly how many classes yeah. did you teach over the last couple of years? Like, I mean, um, last were, year, last year I taught, I taught 500 classes last year, but the year before that was my record. I taught over 700 classes. Yeah. That's un. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Like I, I did yeah. 75 to 80 in a year and I felt like that was insane. And I can't, I mean, I can't even imagine, <laughs> can't even imagine 700. I love but, it though. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's my first, it's my first love, you know, and I would rather, yeah. I would rather go without eating to teach. You know, like I, I, I should, I should uh, hold up like a little sign, like a hobo on the side of the road. We'll teach for food, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's cool, and <laughs> and that's something good for uh, salons to understand. Like you are willing, you're out there. Um, has anything mm -hmm. changed on your? So that was a couple years ago. Um, is your YouTube the same now? Is it the same name? And it, it's it's changed. Um, I believe. God, what is my YouTube now? It's uh. Well, you got to get awesome or that. hairdresser. I think it's, <laughs> awesome. I know totally. <laughs> it's awesome or hairdresser because because I have a whole okay. like Facebook group that's um, yeah. awesome or hairdressers unite unite and take over, and then I yeah. have um, every day I put out my how to be a more awesome or hairdresser, which is really just like self help that I, I got and come and you know, tell people the things I'm working through, and then you know people say they like it, but really it's just my own like therapy. I think. Well, and it's actually so, uh, really fun to watch because um, I was talking to Andrew Does Hair the other day and I said, you know, there's two YouTube channels that I actually, that are hairdressers that I watch. And one of them is him and one of them is you because I love like, oh. I love, you know, me and my wife, we sit down and I try to catch up like I, YouTube is my TV. So like at Ooh. night I sit down and I look at all the people that I subscribe to and I kind of just catch up on their content and you're always on, you always pop up on there and, and me and Christina are like, you know, what's Ryan up to? How's he doing? You know? And, and we can really tell like how you're, how you're doing through, through that. And, uh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. if I'm in an angry mood, I say a lot of cuss words, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you know what? And that was one of the things that I saw in the chat a lot is that you just seem like a real, a real guy. And, and that's, that's what I like about you when the way you put yourself out there is that you are, I mean, right. you're, it's it's Thank a true thing. That. Um Woody's asking Woody is asking uh does the braid hold the section better? What do you think about that? Yeah, it, it does. I like to hold the braid for a, a couple of reasons. We both have the same mentor. You talked to him not too long ago. Uh yeah. or not, not maybe not mentor, but um, you know, Robert Chromie taught me a lot, but one thing that he also taught me too was, you know, while sectioning, you should have everything look pretty. And braids really make it look pretty, but yeah. also it's a very utilitarian thing as well because I don't want to inadvertently grab any hair, you know, and sometimes that clip isn't holding it firm enough. So if I braid it just a little bit, it really locks it down for me. So it's kind of twofold. One is utilitarian and one just makes it look pretty. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and that's totally yeah. the truth. You know, we did, we did kind of have that inspiration. Um, a lot oh, of yeah. sections, a lot of sections were braided or put up with a chopstick or those kind of things instead of a clip. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do think it goes into like when we teach things, we do that. Um, all right. Terrific. Let's see. Somebody, Brenda said, won't try to visualize. I'm guessing she's talking about your pants. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. I don't want to visualize <laughs> it either. Uh, Ryan, it, <laughs> Ryan is hilarious. All right, cool. So I think we got pretty much, you know, um, all the questions. Sure. How did I get away from watching Ryan? He is so cool. Yeah, go back and watch him. So, uh, <laughs> go back and you watch guys, me, yeah. Kristen. Uh, so, mm -hmm. if you guys want, uh, I would definitely go follow Ryan. Um, awesomer hairdressers. Find it on uh, YouTube and Instagram. Your Instagram uh, used to everything used to be sideways. Now it's a video form uh, where you put out these videos and you talk about you know just things that are going on in your life and all of that start conversations. I know you've been doing these like happy hour things. How's that going? Yeah. Good? I love it. I love it. You know, it's, it's, uh, what happened was, uh, I've been invited to so many like zoom meetings since this quarantine <clears throat> by manufacturers. And they're like, Oh, 
let's do this, you know, Zoom meeting. And then it just becomes a sales pitch the entire time. And so I'm like, I don't want to do sales pitch. I don't have anything I'm selling at all right now. I would rather just have a happy hour and just hang out with a few people. So um, I've been doing it through my awesome hairdressers. Anybody can join that. Um, Like, if you do shameless self-promotion, I'll I'll boot you off the, the group. But aside from that, it's mainly just a support group for a bunch of hairdressers. You know, if you're a beauty school student or a hairdresser, the only thing is you have to be a hairdresser. Um, yeah. And then every Friday night, about happy hour, we get together and for an hour and a half, I do I host a Zoom meeting and we sit around and drink. And lately, we've been putting together um, we've been putting together COVID inspired um, cocktails. So like I made like a That's COVID cool. teeny the other day, which was um, like Campari, uh, orange juice, ice, vermouth, and uh, dry gin. It was it was actually really quite nice. But you know somebody else like crushed up like cough drops and and you know made you know simple syrup out of it. I'm like that's brilliant. So <laughs> you know r- uh, last yeah. week we had I think twenty something people on there, and I, I we do it every Friday. And actually everybody's like we want to do it after uh, the quarantine's over. We'll probably move it to a Monday then. Because yeah. people are just really enjoying just hanging out and not and not, you know, letting your hair down essentially. And you can cuss, you can talk about, you know, you can talk about things that maybe not politically correct or or politically correct within our industry. Like, you know, we can talk trash about manufacturers if we want to. I try yeah. and keep it pretty like, you know, uh, uh, I don't really get into bash talking so much anymore. Um, I mean, I can with the rest of them. I just try not to. Um, right. But uh People are loving it. They're, they're, you know, asking if we could do it multiple times a week. I'm like, I really don't want to do it the one time a week. But once I get on, I love it. So if <laughs> yeah. anybody wants to come, they're more than welcome to join. It's every Friday, uh, two o'clock Pacific, two, three, four, five o'clock Eastern. Okay. All right. So you start early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you should you should come on it too sometime, Matt. If, if you're not busy, you should come. I, I have you're to. Busy, yeah. But. Yeah, I should, yeah. we should definitely come on there because we've actually been, um, so one of the local bars in, you went to Triumph, I think with me, maybe, but, um, yeah, I loved it. one, yeah. one of the bartenders from Triumph, they obviously got laid off of work and he's not working. So mm-hmm. he started this socially distancing Facebook group and where he, cre- he makes cocktails and just shoots the shit with everybody, you know, the whole time. And, uh, you know, and then people Venmo tip him and he teaches you how to make a drink and, you know, it's just a fun and he oh, tells stories. Yeah, he tells stories and it, it's actually grown. They just did a write up about it on uh, you know, in the local, you know, news Facebook thing. So it's uh it's pretty cool. And it's it's just fun that like out of this whole thing, and we were talking about it, like this industry is gonna be better than than mm-hmm. it was uh coming out of this for sure. And you know, and it's just because people are are able to have had time to think. I mean, that's like the mm-hmm. biggest thing for me. Like I've had time to like really adjust my priorities and what is important. And do I really care how many manufacturers are on this thing? Or like, do I really care? Um, like I went from like growing, trying to grow my Instagram like crazy. I was p- pumping out content and I wasn't even enjoying pumping it out because a lot of it was just recycled stuff. And I just kept putting it, but the numbers don't grow if you don't pump it out. Right. And like, uh-huh. I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm literally losing followers on Instagram, but I just don't care because I, I, I know the core people, like the people that watch this show and the people, like, I want to get back to mm-hmm. that, that community, you know? Yeah. And I, th- I think that we're just, everybody's going to come out of this with a different head, a different mindset. Um, and I know we were talking about that as well. Yeah. I think that, you know, um, we're going to look back on this in 10 years. Now, I think that this is, all, you know, I mean, if, the tragedy is horrible. I mean, like, like you know, one yeah. person dying from it, it doesn't matter how many people died. That's horrible. I don't even want to get into that discussion because that's, yeah. that's all. Right. But I think that what's going to happen is 10, 10 months from now, we're going to look back and, you know, maybe we'll be sitting at a, at a bar, me and you, or like, you know, at, at a dinner party or whatnot, discussing all the things that came from this time period and, you know, and, and new relationships or relationships that, that died. Um there's going to be new apps that come out. You know, there's going to be new apps that come out. There's going to be great art. There's going to be great music. There's going to be great, you know, hairdressers, you know, within our industry. I mean, education is going to change exponentially. And, you know, we may never pay for education again, or, you know, it may stay the same, but, you know, something, something is going to come different. And I think that um, hands-on education is going to take off. Five minutes later. What's up guys? 
a little bit of technical difficulties, so I apologize for that. I still have Ryan on here. We got everything back up and running. Hopefully you guys can find the link uh, on YouTube. I'm gonna splice this all back together and put the show as one uh, later on. Computer crashed, I don't know what happened, but we think Ryan was saying something uh, that was <laughs> um, top secret. <laughs> top secret material uh and that's two of me that's not ryan hang on we'll get it i thought i'll just see the devil yeah <laughs> whoa uh, i don't even like one of me that much all right here we go ryan's coming back all right now i got him all right guys so um i want to continue the conversation just talking about uh I, I, hopefully you kind of know where you were. Uh, I did see Lynn say something about she doesn't like any of this process. And I would like to say that none of us like this process. Like we no. don't like, we don't like being stuck. Um, you know, and, and I was saying to, uh, Andrew's hair on the last episode, like, I feel very grateful that I have this to be kind of a consistency. Like mm -hmm. this show has kind of saved my sanity a little bit, just being able to do something Monday through Friday and, and get up for something and go to work. And I'm well aware that a lot of hairdressers don't have that outlet. Um, but we're creative people. And I think that, you know, if we've used this time, which some of us are getting back to a normal a little bit, but if we've used this time to grow ourselves and to really sit back and think, and to retrain our minds and all that stuff. I really think that's what we're talking about from a 10 year standpoint. So you were saying like 10 years from now, we could be sitting together, you know, and talking about this time. Yeah. Yeah. I think not even 10 years. I'm thinking 10 months. I, I think, that, I think that um, we're going to see it rather quickly. Like even like next year, I think that we're going to see yeah. it. And, and um, I don't like what's going on either. I mean, I've been, I've been managed. I, I've been managing to, to keep pretty busy most of the time as well, but like for instance, yesterday I stood in my kitchen for maybe 15 minutes, staring out the window, trying to decide if I wanted to start day drinking or not. I mean, I and I I couldn't make the decision because I was like, do I want to do this again? Do I want to play Sim City? Do I want to play Fallout? You know, do I want to go try right. to do something creative? And and it's it's and I I will just like put my face against the window because I don't want to go outside sometimes. You know, I, I mean like there's nothing to do and it's, and it's driving me crazy. So I feel the same way. On the yeah. other hand, I did take a lot of this time. Well I, well, I was talking about education before, but I also talk about what I've, I've, you know, other things that I've been doing. But, you know, education wise, I feel that um, I don't know if, we, if uh, it fell off before I um, finished talking about this, but I was talking about how um, I think that hands on education is going to become super valuable because I think that all these manufacturers are spending so much time giving away free education online. I think that when hands on education comes to your town, you're going to really be uh thankful for it so you can actually you know get together and hang out with people almost like a like a homeschool kid almost like you know when we yeah. all get together we're, we're just gonna want to like hang out so much and like it's, it's gonna be crazy you know i totally um, agree that's actually it, that's a such a good point when you look at like the future of hair shows and all that uh that we kind of talked about all the, all of them got canceled but um mm -hmm. the fact is for for quite a while i don't think we're gonna have big gatherings of people so um, you know, the intimate 10 person, uh, education hands-on is going to be a big deal, I think. And, and more often. Mm -hmm. I also think that the big ones are going to come back big time. I, I think that yeah. if they were to take a chance, cause I know that premier's talking about having Orlando this year in August. And I, I think that uh, IBS is as well. Um, if they were to take a chance and if people did, you know, feel like comfortable enough to go back out. I think it's going to be more t attended than ever because we all miss each other. You know, yeah. hairdressers are pack animals and we all want to hang out with each other. For you sure. know, that, that I feel like, you know, people are going to want to hang out. I know I do yeah. more than ever. Yeah. That's you a know? good call. And I'm afraid yeah. that I'm going to have, I'm, going to, I'm afraid that I'm going to have PTSD when I do finally get out and hang out with people and I won't know what to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's true. You know? Yeah. Um, one thing that I've been talking about uh, with a lot of people though is, is, you know, I feel like if there are, are salons or, or business owners, and when I'm talking business owners, I even talk, um, you know, employees uh, can be their own business, really. But I think that, you know, people should should be and should have been rebranding themselves 100% this entire time and, and focusing on uh, branding themselves. So when they get back behind the chair, they'll be able to um, 
they'll be beasts. You know, they could yeah. completely rewrite their brand right now because they've been quiet, you know, or if they did put something out, they put out very small amounts, they could be, you know, they could rebrand and, and just take off, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people are, are afraid of, of getting on social media because they, they feel like it's, you know, it's too hard. There's it's too much work or any of that kind of stuff. You're right. Social media is work. Social media is a full time job, um, but sure. you have to do it, you know, yeah. and it's it's free um, compared to when, you know, we we both opened businesses back way back in the day. And in order to get the same kind of advertising, you had to take out newspaper ads, which was expensive. Yeah. You know. It was really expensive. So, I mean, we based everything on word of mouth because we didn't have the money to put, uh, you know, yeah, new, newspaper ads and all that stuff. And we uh, opened in 2008 and that was like the, uh, you know, the worst that we were in the recession at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was yeah. like, you remember when they were doing car clunkers for whatever? It was like cash for clunkers. Cash for and they clunkers, give you like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five grand for any car that there was. Well, like yeah. we were doing yeah. like cuts for you know whatever like we were doing 50 percent off haircuts <laughs> you know like just giving things away because it was such a bad time so um oh, yeah. you know this this is going to be at least uh when ever, everybody's starting to go back to work a little bit i know we aren't because we're in a different phase of this whole thing but it's good that our clients mm-hmm. are starting to get back to work because then when they you know they'll have financially be more set when we're ready to go you know what i mean which is kind of a good way to look I at it i hadn't even thought of that that's a great way of looking at it cuz i've been sitting here just pissed off that they're not letting hairdressers you know back to work cuz all, literally all my friends are off work yeah. i hadn't even thought of that it's actually a really good idea that our clients are going back so they have money to spend with us that's that's a great idea yeah i didn't really think great about way it of yet. looking at it until then, until that moment. That's the good thing about, that's the good thing about just talking, you know, all of a sudden totally. you're like, wow, that sounded pretty good. All right. But, but that is, that's how it works, you know? So, uh-huh. all right, cool. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, I'm new to the industry and I'm finding your videos so useful. Oh, thank you. Uh, sometimes I shouldn't read until I read. Um, I sit by the pool. I haven't done that in years. Uh, yeah. Hair school classes have been canceled. I'm going insane. It's horrible. I'm just thankful for all the online tutorials and videos, which I learned from. Yeah. Let's see. I think that's good. I don't think there's any other questions. Anything else you want to talk about, Ryan, before you head out? Um, One thing that I would uh, probably tell people to just, you know, based off of that last uh, comment that you just read about, you know, I'm so uh, grateful for the, uh, hands on or the, the, the online free education that people are seeing. I think that that's awesome. I think that, you know, um, people, you know, doing demos of haircuts and all that kind of stuff. I think it's, it's keeping people, you know, busy so they don't go insane. And, you know, I think it's inspiring a lot of people that are watching the haircuts. But what I also love as well is all of the, you know, chats, like, like what you're doing right now with, with, you know, woke up this way and talking to people. And, you know, I, I think that, when you get motivation and when you get, you know, skill training, skill training shouldn't only come from this. Yeah. I feel like skill training should also come from this. And I think you're spending some time with that. And, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. And I, I um, think that there's a lot more people that need to focus on maybe not just haircutting, but also on the chat or, or the personal yeah. uh, experience training, essentially. For sure. Yeah, I, you know. I totally agree with that. I, not not enough people watch things like, um, you know, we're going through this with our son right now. He's into lacrosse and, you know, he, he's 12, but he says, I want to be a professional lacrosse player. And he's really into it. He practices every day. But we say to him, you know, like just shooting a ball doesn't get you to be a professional. You have to study like he so things that he doesn't. I mean, he actually likes it, but like he'll sit down and, and go through like film. You know, and I think as hairdressers, like there's a lot of things you can take from different things. And I played sports growing up, but like, and I know you're not a a sports guy necessarily. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen that on Facebook, but um, (laughs) there's a a lot of things like as, as you grow up, like you, you know, there's parts of a job that maybe aren't the glamorous part of it, but it's so important to take advantage of like right now, just really studying why certain people are successful. Like I look at different people's, Instagrams or I look at, you know, different hair cutters. I'm like, well, how did they create that little piece? Like if I have trouble behind the ear, behind the ear in that Bob, like I'll study and watch where are their hands? Like, how are their hands positioned? What is the elevation during that? Why did they get a better line than I get? And like, I just completely try to break down that little aspect of it. 
And that's where I think a lot of people need to get more into that stuff and listen mm -hmm. and, and be a part of a conversation, like be in the chat talking and asking questions about things. Yeah. Cause that's the only way you learn. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I see. Yeah, so you ahead. said your son's, in, you said your son's into lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one of my old clients, my, one of my old clients was a professional lacrosse player up in Canada, um, by the name of Dallas. E. Lewick, I think was his name, and and they actually uh, just retired his jersey like two years ago. Oh, uh, that's awesome! That's so cool. Yeah, it's it's uh, I love lacrosse. Like, uh, it, it's if you guys um, like I make a lacrosse Instagram for our son. Like me and my wife, we do it uh, together as well, and it's a full time job. Like he posts a video every day, and he's and he's been growing, and he's at like almost a thousand followers, Good. and he posts his workouts wow. every day, and. You know, he has teams from all over the country that send him private messages and players and like it, it's all part of it. You know what I mean? Like it's the future. Like people, if people are going to see you, you know, you got to see those workouts and, and they're already seeing him at 12 years old. So, you know, when he's 18, you don't, you don't know, but like, again, that, it's part, that translates, part of the world. Yeah. And that translates to beauty school students. I mean, beauty school students like, like calling me and asking me, you know, how do I become successful or how do I, whatever. I mean, do yeah. exactly what your son's doing right now and post your workout, post your hair workout. Yep. And then you know, after I mean, we post that's exactly his, what he's like. Yeah. And we post his workout and then we tag every single, um, professional training company team. Like, uh, you tag all of the people. So if you translate that into hair, you tag all your favorite hairdressers, the salon that you want to work at the, um, you know, cause then that makes people aware of you. And we've talked about it that mm -hmm. for a long time. Like if you want us, if you want to work in a specific salon and you can't get an interview with them, if you tag them every day with work that you're doing and it's beautiful, like there's no way that even if it's not beautiful, but the, the, just the fact that you're doing it consistently every day, I would, I would hire somebody in a heartbeat yep. if that's what they were doing every day, you know? Exactly. So, Me too. Yeah. So you can, you can teach how to do hair. Like that's not, you can teach anybody to do hair, but you can't teach somebody to want it, you know? And that's like, exactly. That's exactly. So, yeah. all right, Ryan. Well, dude, I, thanks for going through the crash with me. I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> I will always go through a crash with you, Matt. <laughs> and I just want to know, I need, I need to know this. So I'm live every day. If I need you, I'm going to text you and this link will get you through to me all the time. So you could just come on live whenever you want. Okay. Okay. So I'd love I to. Want, yeah, yeah, totally. I'd love I'm, to. I'm trying to build a team of like, um, do I need Ryan Teal's opinion right now? I'm just going to text him and like get <laughs> you on friend. here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, That's it's, awesome. I'd love to do that. All right, cool. And and you're great at pulling up a signal, which is the, those are the key people I'm trying to find. I need personality and, and tech ability. So, <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much. Everybody appreciates it. They're very, you know, they're, they're happy to see awesome. you. So. Go follow Ryan Teal. And come Ryan. do a happy hour with me. Yeah, for sure. That'd be fun. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, we'll, I'll awesome. do it right around the kitchen table. <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. There All is right, some cool. cussing now. That's okay. Uh, That's tell okay. Amy I said hi. Uh, I will, yeah. for sure. All right. Um, okay, see you guys. All right, dude. We'll see you. All right, guys. I'm back. All right, so we're going to continue on with the show. I don't even know how long this show has been at this point because... <laughs> We had the crash, but I don't think it's been too, too crazy. I know it was a little more chatter than normal, but um, I, this is about a hangout for us guys and learning and just having fun, uh, and enjoying uh, these days. So um, the next video that we're going to get into is a, we're going to have kind of an undercut theme for a couple haircuts. I got three haircuts left. Um, also, if you want to see something, post it uh, in the chat uh, as well. Um, and then we dropped off in our numbers. So we had record numbers on Friday. We were killing it today until the crash. Now we're real low on numbers. So let's get some people in here. Share this show. If you can hit share on whatever social platform you're on Facebook or YouTube, just hit the share button and share it to whatever social platform is your favorite or tag a friend. That's just a hairdresser. Tag them, say, get them over here. Uh, we're going to do this haircut. This is a great uh, haircut for thick, thick hair. So this is my client, Amy. She's got super thick hair. We do an undercut on her. She's already got one. So we just clean that up and then we go in and do some layering with a razor. I think you guys are going to like it. Uh, so let's get started with the video. Here it is. Thanks for watching. <laughs> 
All right, guys, so this is my model for the day. This is Amy. What we're going to do on her hair, she's got really, really thick hair. Um, she also has a shaved underneath, which I'm going to show you guys in a second. That is not something I did. It's something that she does even on her own. So what I wanted to do is just clean that up. But I also like the fact that she has that because it does take out a lot of weight from the underneath. I probably wouldn't go up as high as it is, but because it's already there, uh, it is what it is. So for the sectioning, I create a horseshoe section all the way around parietal ridge, back around a little bit lower on the crown. And the reason I go a little bit lower is because I'm going to cut layers underneath this U shape or this horseshoe shape on the top. I'm going to cut those layers and then the rest of the hair is going to hang over top of it. So we're going to be creating a disconnection. And my goal with that is to make sure that I have that hair that falls over it so I don't have short layers everywhere. So right there, you can see I kind of expose that underneath um, section. That again, she doesn't go to a salon to get that done. They just kind of shave it up. So I wouldn't go quite as high up on the occipital bone, but that's just my personal preference. And it actually does work pretty well for her hair. I'm using the Andis Envy. Uh, this is a cordless clipper. I'm using a one guard on it um, just to go in and again, clean it up. I'm not really trying to do anything fancy underneath here. I just want it to look nice. So I take the one guard and then I go through, I go a little bit, a half step down take it a little tighter around the nape, and then I go in with my Andis T trimmer just to finish it up, create some lines in the back, and that is how we do the bottom of the haircut. Now I let down the interior part of the haircut, and what I'm going to be using, the tool of my choice uh, for this cut is the um, Donald Scott Swivel Twist Razor. Um, the reason I like this tool is because I can use any comb that I want. I'm using the YS Park 339 comb to get a nice tight tension, and I like a smaller comb. I also spray all over the head the Donald Scott Prepare, which is a it's a liquid tool glide for the razor. It also is pure coconut and sunflower oil, so it gives a nice slip to the hair. It helps keep the hair protected when using it for razor cutting. So the thing I like about the twist is you'll see I'm not carving into the hair. I slide through it. So I pick where I want to cut and I bring everything straight out from the head and I'm working in basically pie shaped sections all the way around the underneath of the hair, starting at the mid shaft and working my way to the end, sliding that razor down. What that's going to do is remove weight for me, but keep her length. If you're afraid of cutting into your guest's length, then what I would do is just drop that length out and then do your slide cutting. Uh, for me, I keep the length right at the tip of my finger so I know exactly where it's at. I'm going to continue these pie shaped sections uh, around the head to the right as well. The only difference is now my fingers are pointing down and we've talked about this in many videos but as I work to the right hand side of the head you never want to comb your guide into the new hair so I'm always combing the new hair towards the guideline so on the left hand side I comb the hair towards the middle and then on the right hand side I'm still combing the hair towards the middle so I make a shift in my hand position which keeps me consistent keeps my sectioning there and my guideline there as well so just working my way all the way to the front hairline and then sliding from mid shaft to the ends, keeping the length, but removing the weight. Now, this is a pretty simple haircut because all I'm gonna do is drop down one half of that U shape and I'm gonna do the same thing, sliding. What I wanted to do here was overdirect everything to the very front, create a stationary guide, create layering around the face, but then pushing that weight to the back. So what we did was we created the layers underneath. We took out a ton of weight, but now I'm pushing that hair over top of it. So at the back of the U shape, if you think about it, that's going to be the longest point. The shortest point is right in the front of the face. So we're creating layers and then the longest point is falling over top of those layers that we created in the back. Also, um, what you'll notice about this technique is we're creating a fringe and using the Donald Scott twist, it has one side of it cuts 100%, which is the side I'm using right now. And then what I do is I go through at the very end and I use the 25%, you can see it right there, 25% cutting side, which takes out 25% of the hair to just remove some bulk. So I comb it around the face, 25%, carve it a little bit below the mid shaft and just work my way through it and that lightens it up so it's not so heavy. Now I'm gonna go in with the uh, Bricado Conditioning Mousse, it's Cloud Nine. Um, 
I, I'm a moose. I really love moose. <laughs> so I'm always on the search for my favorite moose. This one I love because it's really fluffy and thick feeling, but it doesn't feel heavy on the hair. It's conditioning. Um, it helps repair the hair as well. Um, so nice, nice thick mousse. And then also the root fix, uh, it's a root lifter mousse that I spray right at the base because I'm going to go in and do a round brush blow dry. I wanted to build up some volume. The blow dryer I'm choosing today, this is the Minerva blow dryer. I've been giving away on the podcast quite a bit. So if you guys listen to our podcast live on Wednesday nights, you have a chance to win uh, one of these blow dryers from Minerva. This thing is super powerful. So I go in, I do a power blow dry. And now I'm going to section off the mohawk section of the hair and start in with my ergo uh, round brush. This is the number 43 brush. So um, it's not the largest one that we have. It's a little bit, it's more like a medium size. I like using that because it gives me a little more volume. People think that the bigger the round brush, the bigger the volume, but it's actually the complete opposite. Um, the, so I like to use a medium brush when I'm looking for some volume in the hair. Notice how when I'm blow drying, I work that section back and forth. I also use the nozzle on the blow dryer to keep the hair nice and smooth, and I allow it to pass over the hair to keep that cuticle down. Shiny hair is when the cuticle is laying down, so that's what you want to be creating. You don't want to be shaking the blow dryer back and forth all over the place. Now I'm going to speed it up because I do the same thing all the way around the head. Just basically blow drying and wrapping it back off of her face is my goal with this. Now, as I move into the top portion, I'm going to take horizontal partings across the top. Let's call it horizontal because it's right in front of me. Um, and I'm going to section it. I'm, I'm blow drying, round brushing back off of the face um, until I get to the midpoint of the head. And then I'm going to round brush everything forward to create extra volume. So you can see we're still doing that. They call it the truck and trailer method, I guess. Um, just working that blow dryer up against the brush. And now I'm blow drying forward, which is going to give me maximum volume right around the front of her head. I didn't need maximum volume in the very back of the head because of the fact that she's got so much thick hair back there. But she likes to wear her hair kind of tossed to either side in the front. That's why we cut it to almost appear like we we're going to cut it for a center parting, but I wanted to keep it more symmetrical because she likes to toss it back and forth on both sides. Now to finish it up, this is that Viber Straight Iron. This is the giveaway that we're doing. So if you want to win this iron, it is an inch and a half iron that vibrates as you smooth it. You can curl with it, smooth, straighten, do whatever you want. Um, the vibration separates the hair as it goes through. So it, it really allows you to not have as many passes over the hair. So it creates less damage. Um, this one has two separate settings. So it's really good. It's a, it's a good consumer based iron. They also have a professional version as well. Then we're going to finish it off with the Bricado Maximum Hold Hairspray. Um, this is basically one of those sprays that will stop a bird in flight, we used to say. Um, it's super firm hold. So I just spray it a little bit just to hold it in place. And you can see all those layers, all the movement that we created in this cut. It looks nice and light, um, but also still thick and full um, as well. It's much easier for her to manage. Check out the bottom where that shaved part is. It's nice and airy. It's got a nice textured look to it. So hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for. All right. So uh, let me. Da, 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 da. There it is. I'm coming back. Yeah, that's not there we go. Now I'm back. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, technique. I did hear some people in the chat. So everybody see, seems like they love it. Uh, shiny hair. Very cool. Uh, one person said, my clients wouldn't do this. I think it was Lynn. Uh, so Lynn, this is what I would say to you. Not everybody's going to do an undercut for sure. So what you could do is transform that undercut uh, from being uh, shaved to just working on that underneath. So like Ryan was saying in his video, the basement part, um, going through and maybe just thin it out quite a bit underneath uh, as opposed to trying to thin the top. So uh, taking out a lot of that density, a lot of that weight or layering uh, that underneath and then allowing a disconnected top to come over so that you're not cutting tons and tons of layers in the hair to remove weight, you're cutting layers for movement. Uh, and that's like the biggest difference for me is to make sure that 
you know, I'm not just layering hair to remove anything. Um, I want to layer the hair to actually benefit my client. So, um, in Amy's case, she's got so much hair. I'd have to do so many layers. If I didn't do the undercut, that undercut takes away half of her hair. Uh, and she loves it. Now, if I had uh, an older client that didn't want to do that, didn't want an undercut, maybe wears her hair up all the time. Then what I would do is I would go in, uh, take from occipital bone down and just run some uh, texturizing scissors through it, layer it, uh, and then allow that top and just cut the from occipital bone up into a, its own haircut and have the underneath kind of just be there and, and skinny it out. So hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, somebody's asking, I can't pronounce the name, but, uh, do you ship your tools to the middle East? I don't, uh, we don't ship to the middle East. We only ship, uh, right now in the U S and that's because we sell Mizutani scissors. And there's a weird thing with, uh, uh, only being able to sell to the U S even though we're a worldwide company. Um, but if you're in the middle East, you can get our app, which is free and you can download it. Um, there's education on there. There's a community on there. Uh, I'm actually going back and forth in between these videos with the developer, um, because we're about to launch the new update, which I'm really excited about for you guys. Uh, that includes notifications and different things, uh, a different, uh, setup layout to the app that looks a little more familiar to you guys. So super, super excited, uh, for you guys to see that update. But right now I want to keep this, uh, flow going, hit the share button. I've got another video for you guys. This is another undercut. And then we're going to do one without an undercut, but this is a Bob. It's an undercut Bob. Uh, super cool uh, end result, very sleek. So I think you guys will like it. I understand it won't work on every one of your clients, but just take the technique for what it is um, and try to place it into something that you would do in the salon. So here it is, Undercut Bob, here we go. All right guys, so we're gonna start off this video like every video, we're gonna start off by sectioning the haircut. Sectioning is the most important part. Now it's really important with this haircut because of the fact that we're gonna do an undercut. An undercut is basically removing density from the cut, so taking away a lot of the hair, but allowing the top of the hair to fall over it, um, which basically gives you a lighter feel to the haircut, um, more PC feel, uh, especially with thick, dense hair. So this is a really cool cut for somebody with a thicker to medium density hair. If they have fine hair, I wouldn't do this haircut on them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off doing clipper over comb. The reason I chose clipper over comb is because, first off, I just wanna get the bulk out of the way. So I'm gonna use my YS Park 209 comb. This is a great comb for clipper over comb because it's nice and wide, So and it's got a smooth surface, so it's easy to glide over uh, the comb with the clipper. So I just hold the hair into my hand and I cut it at around the length that I'm looking for. It's not necessarily, this isn't the final cut. I'm just getting the bulk out of the way and then working my way through. You could also use a guard in this, but I wanna leave it a little bit longer. Um, I don't like to go shaving the bottom of the hair because my goal is really just to have a nice kind of push off so that it gives a little height to the rest of the haircut. So if you think about it, if I leave a little bit of density throughout the bottom and in the nape area, when the top hair falls over, it pushes it out a little bit, gives it some more volume. So I go through, clipper over comb, clean it up nice, get all the lengths very similar, and then I'll go through and do my detailing on the edges. So I'm scooping the hair up, um, angling the comb towards me, and uh, passing the clipper over the comb. Now what I'm gonna do is go through and do a little blow dry just to smooth down the hair. Now this is for a couple reasons. I'm using a mannequin, the hair tends to stick straight out from the head. So this could be a similar situation that you guys are in. But I like to go through and just uh, blow dry it, use the heat of the blow dryer to lay down the hair, get it nice and polished. Then I go through and I clean up the edges using my scissor. I'm using the Mizutani Type K scissor. This is one of my favorites. Um, that we have on freesaloneducation.com for purchase. You can check that out as well. But I like this scissor at a five and a half inch because it gives me a nice strong blade. But this scissor is very, very soft. So if you love a soft feel to the haircut when you're cutting hair, then this is definitely the scissor for you. So you can see, nice, not too short, but short enough. Now I'm gonna comb everything back to me and go center part uh, directly down across the top and then down center back. And I'm gonna separate this into four quadrants. We're gonna make this haircut very simple. So the hardest part is that undercut. Make sure that your sectioning is the right way. 
But now what I'm going to do is go through just braiding off each section or each panel. Uh, the reason I like to braid it is because it just looks better than a clip. It also keeps the hair in the direction that I want it to be for the rest of the haircut. So sometimes when you twist everything up in a Zulu knot, just it takes away some of the timing. So just braiding it, keeping it in the direction. I'm, I have everything combed the direction I'm going to have it later. So it's just quicker work. So now I comb everything down, hold it flat with my fingers. This will start my guideline, but also give me zero elevation. So a lot of people would pinch it in their fingers at that point. But what that's going to do is give you that flip because it's going to cut shorter hair. It's going to give it a slight bit of elevation. So you're not going to get a strong line on the base. So keeping everything tight to the neck uh, allows you to have pure zero elevation uh, on the bottom. So now I'm going to work a backhand technique. The thing I like about this technique as opposed to holding it in my fingers and cutting it at my finger is that it really allows me to see the lengths that I'm cutting. So I go past the guide and then I visualize where I want that line to be and I cut it in. So tends to work on this type of cut where there's not a lot of density. I probably wouldn't do that same technique if this was a full bob haircut, but when you have a light density, it's a really cool technique just to create a line in there. So you can see I do the same thing on the sides, creating a little bit of an angle so it drops a little bit in the front following that jawline. Now this side is where you're going to see the benefits of this backhand technique because I want to match up this side with the left side. They're symmetrical, it's parted in the center so you want to have the same length. So I find that visual point, I go past my guide where my guide would be and I cut the hair exactly where I want it um, to match up with the opposite side. So it takes a little getting used to, definitely practice it, but it's a cool technique to, to add into your toolbox like we talk about. Uh, in other videos. So now we're using Bricado Mousse. I'm gonna put that through the hair. I work it through with the brush and then we're gonna do a flat wrap technique just to soften the hair, get it into a natural fall, get it nice and smooth. You can see the shine starting to develop on the hair. Really that comes from the air passing over the cuticle, laying that cuticle down and just creating that reflection of the light. So we go back and forth, polishing the hair and, and working that flat wrap technique. I'm using the Ergo Paddle Brush. Uh, it's got great tension, it's really soft on your guests. So it pulls the hair nice and tight, gives you that tension, creates the shine, so just a really great tool. Now I'm gonna go in, finish it off with the Bricado Vibra Straight Iron. Um, so the great thing about this technique is that there's not a lot of density left in the hair. So ironing it's pretty simple. Um, you don't have to work through the back nape. That's the hardest part. It's where all of you guys out there, if you're not a hairdresser and you have a bob haircut, you struggle with trying to get the nape smooth. But if you have it cut short and you have an undercut, you don't have to worry about that. So we go through, just use the Vibra Straight Iron, mid shaft to ends, polish it out. And now I'm gonna do my finishing touches with, a, with some dry cutting techniques to really just pull this haircut together. I wanna to add a little bit of texture to it, but I also wanna polish the outer perimeter, and that's what we're doing now. Still using the Type K, um, just smoothing out the front there a little bit more, but using the Type K, the point of the scissor to go across the perimeter, cut it um, that line that I want, and now I'm gonna go through doing the tease cutting technique. The trick to this technique is it's a half open, half closed. So you're not actually closing the scissor down on the hair you're just pinching the hair into the mid shaft of the scissor, so of the blade. So really just uh, pulling the hair into the middle of the blade, half cutting as you push in, teasing the hair in that way, and then that'll give you your cut. So you don't wanna close all the way, you just wanna give it a nice soft teased cut feel, gives it that separation and texture. I'm gonna break it down and go a little bit slower here in one second. So. Same thing, I'm grabbing hair, pulling it straight out from the head, no over direction. We're not trying to change the shape of the haircut. If I over direct the hair, I would shift the weight. So half close, half, and then open, half close, then open. And just holding the hair straight out from the head, creating a light feel to the layering that we're creating. Elevation is nice and high, you can see that. I hold it high up in the air and I let my guideline fall out so I let the outer perimeter fall out because you don't want to cut into the outer perimeter. Once that falls out, then I start the uh, tease cutting technique throughout. All right, so we're gonna finish off the cut with this product that Joico sent me. It's called Hair Shake. 
And the cool thing about this product, when you shake it, it sounds like it's a uh, spray paint can, but then when you spray it out, it comes out feeling like you think it's a liquid. And then by the time it hits the hair, it turns into a powder form. So it gives you this really cool texture that I think is unique to a lot of different products out there. Um, it's got a really great smell to it. So just a really cool way to finish off uh, a textured haircut. So next time guys, next video, I'm gonna color this haircut. So let me know what you think. This is the color technique that we're gonna do. We're gonna create more of a root. Yep. All right, so what did you guys think? Uh, another undercut. I, I really dig that one um, because it just creates such a sleek effect. So uh, it seems like you guys in the chat like it. I want to keep this thing flowing. I got one more haircut for you guys for the show today. Uh, I want to keep everybody online, so just stay there. Share this uh, video, share this live stream with your friends. Here is the cut. It's a layered haircut on long hair. Uh, hope you enjoy the technique. Here we go. Start off the haircut on the left hand side. If your guess parts on the opposite side, then you're going to start there and mimic what I'm doing. Um, but you want to start off where your guest parts their hair. That's the uh, key thing in this haircut. Now, if you have trouble getting through long hair, this is our Ergo uh, Polishing Paddle Brush. The cool thing about it, you can see through the teeth when you hold it vertically. And then when you hold it horizontally, the teeth are a little more scattered. What that does is when you're holding the brush vertically, um, it's going to have wider teeth. So it's easier to detangle the hair. And then you can switch it to a more of a horizontal hold of the brush. That's going to give you more tension and help you polish out the hair. So there's two uses for one brush. You want to make sure you're using it the right way because if the hair is uh, kind of tangled up and you hold the brush horizontally, you might get the brush stuck in the hair. It's going to do a lot more pulling. So um, that's just a cool little tip for you guys. Um, check your paddle brush, see if it's like that. Um, if not, if you're looking for a new paddle brush, we definitely have that one on Free Salon Education. So we're gonna start by parting the hair. We have the, the part on the left-hand side. Then what I did was I took from mid-crown over to the temple area and sectioned off an asymmetrical triangle on the heavy side of the head. Now I create another triangle from uh, mid-crown down to behind the ear, and I do the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna start by cutting a baseline to start the structure of the haircut. So what I want to do is create a nice solid line to use as my beginning guideline and to also clean up the bottom of the hair before I started. We're going to be going through with concave layering. What that's going to do is help collapse the head shape. We're going to work with pie shaped sections throughout the back. So everything's going to go to the previous section. We're going to have a traveling guide, which is a little bit harder because anytime you're moving your guide uh, throughout the haircut, it just it's harder to stay consistent. So just make sure you're really focused on every move that you make is, is happening the same exact way and you have a really strong guideline coming through in the haircut. So we're working concave in the back. Uh, we're collapsing the shape. We're removing a maximum amount of weight in the back, which is why this haircut is so great for high density hair. Um, so all I'm doing is taking those pie shaped sections, bringing the hair to the previous, looking for my strong guide in the back. And how I started the haircut, I took a vertical section and I just grabbed my guide from the very bottom. So I lifted the hair, found that guide. And I think what a lot of people do when they're cutting concave in the back, especially working around this way, is they don't follow their guide so much, they just follow the bottom piece of hair. So what happens is you build inconsistency in the shape. What you wanna do is cut that first line that first vertical parting that you take, cut that, base that off of the bottom length, but then as you work through the back of the haircut, use your guide and make sure that you stay with your guide throughout the entire back so that you get a nice structured cut. Just because we're collapsing weight doesn't mean that we don't want structure um, because when you go through and you blow it dry at the end, which you guys will see, um, you want that structure to help have a really nice polished finished look. So. Continuing throughout the back, you can see the head sheets on the side. Those are also going to be available. I'll be posting those up on FSE social app so you can download them, save them to your phone. If you want to um, kind of refer back to the head sheets, I'm trying to do that with all of these cuts so that you guys can um, download them and have them with you even if you can't watch the video um, throughout the day. So one thing I want you to take notice of is the body position that I'm in. Um, so I'm standing on the right hand side of the guest. Um, key thing to make sure when you're cutting concave so that your elbow doesn't get in the way, your elbow should be away from the head. 
So if your elbow is on top of the head, then you're standing in the wrong uh, position. So just make sure that you shift yourself so that when you shift that elbow up, you can get your elbow um, right where you want it. I like to keep my elbow closer to my body. I think anytime you lift your elbow too much, you lose that consistency in your line. That's a personal preference. Some people love to kick their elbow up uh, and create a straight line with their hand and their elbow. But for me, I like to just keep my arms as low as possible throughout the haircut to keep that consistency. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go through, I let down the sides, I'm gonna go through and cut a nice blunt line on the bottom and then check my balance. Now the balance is gonna be a little bit off and you need to know that as you're cutting it because I have an asymmetrical section still sectioned away on the top. So the one side that's not sectioned off is gonna be longer in the front than the side that is sectioned off. So that's good. It's a really important thing to remember because a lot of people go in and just start cutting to balance that right away. And you need to know. So what I like to do is check it from the back. If you look at it from the back, you can see the balance to the shape. And then you don't go in and cut things that you shouldn't and mess up the entire haircut. So now we're going to work through the sides, still creating um, almost a concave uh, layer. This is pretty much at 100 degrees at this point. Um, so we're definitely removing a ton of weight from the side of the head, creating those seamless layers. Anything above 90 degrees is going to be seamless. You're not really going to see any weight lines in the haircut. So I wanted to have that nice and light feel on the weaker side of the haircut, um, have those nice light layers, but leave a little bit of extra length um, on the side so that you still keep that density. So we're going to work through everything's coming back to the previous still a traveling guide in this haircut still keeping that finger angle the same and working through you notice right there i took up too much hair couldn't see the guide so i make my adjustment and i recomb it you want to make sure as you're working through a haircut if you ever lose your guide if you're talking too much or whatever you're doing you lose that guide then just recomb don't cut until you find it because you're you're just doing yourself harm if you go that route. So we're working through the back now uh, into the other side. Same thing. So you can see my elbow is away from the head, um, working those kind of concave layers in the back and just working my way through. The big thing that I've changed now is that I'm combing the hair away from my body towards my guide. Talk about it in every haircut. I'm going to talk about it in every haircut I ever teach is that you want to comb the new hair towards the guide so you're not pushing the guide from where it lives. If you move your guide too much, then it diffuses the guide, you can't see it, and you end up with the haircut that you didn't want. Um, so just as you're working through, make sure you really focus on your combing. Combing is what makes a professional hair cutter um, more than just the scissor or the cutting or anything like that. You want to make sure that you're combing the right way. So overdirecting everything to the previous, getting our guide from there, working our way through the side, and just finishing up this part. So you can see that layering coming about. Um, now I comb down the top portion, and we're going to work with the round of the head to create these nice soft round layers. I want to keep everything at 90 degrees at this point, so I'm following the head shape. So if you look back at previous haircuts that we've done, this is taking pieces from everything that we do. So when you look at the 90 degree haircut that I did um, maybe a month ago, um, this is a piece of that. So following the head shape. So we created concave layers throughout the whole uh, kind of baseline area, everything under the parietal ridge to collapse more of the head shape because this is we're working with a denser um, a higher density of hair so the thicker the hair the more weight you want to remove so we remove that from the side now i'm going through creating soft layers at 90 degrees um, not being as extreme with the layering and just connecting it that way so it's combining um, this is a big thing that uh, i i want to really drive home with everyone is that Every haircut that you see me doing, you shouldn't be doing them exactly the way that I do it. Um, every guest hair is different. Every guest hair has a different um, density. Every guest hair is a different texture and formation. You should not be copying um, exactly what I'm doing with the haircut. Take each thing and add it to every haircut. So all 50 of these vlog videos that we've done are all different haircuts 
but they're done for a purpose. So make sure that you grab pieces from every single one and create your own feel to every haircut that matches your guest. So that is the end of the haircut. We worked our way through, still a traveling guide, and you can see how uh, that shape of the haircut really falls nice. Um, you could wear this curly, you could wear it straight. It's a great haircut for pretty much medium to high density hair. Um, and now we're gonna go through, we got our Bricado mousse, and I'm gonna blow it dry. So I work the product through the ends. Um, it's pretty exciting. We actually have that product available on Free Salon Education now. And I go through with the brush vertically, which we talked about at the beginning, um, to detangle the hair and really work that product through. I wanna get the product on every bit of the hair. Now I go through and use my hands to blow dry the hair. Um, there's no reason, we're gonna go in with a round brush, but there's no reason to uh, use a brush to do the whole entire blow dry when you can get it 90% dry and then go through with your brush and finish off the rest. So we're gonna be working with our Ergo round brushes. So I love Ergo brushes. Um, we've had them on the site for a while. I don't show off round brushes enough and you guys have been requesting it. So um, I'm gonna go through, I sectioned off the top horseshoe shape um, with a chopstick and then I just work the outer edges with two round brushes. So um, I do one round brush, heat it up, work that section, really polish it out and let the brush set and cool in there and then as soon as I work my next section, I leave the brush in there and then I clip away the previous. So just working those two brushes through, if you wanna have 10 brushes, that's cool too, you could do that. Um, but two brushes kind of working through and then I use pin curl clips to hold the hair together. Now this is a quick blow dry, this is more of a salon friendly blow dry. Um, not super polished, but it's definitely, um, I'm creating as much volume as possible and going through there and just Again, it's more of a salon reality kind of thing. So working my way through, uh, switching those brushes off, twisting the hair. So when I take the hair out of the brush, I retwist it up and pin it away with the pin curl clip and um, just sections it away nice. Um, the reason you want to pin it away and let that brush kind of cool in there is because when you heat up the hair, it, it allows it, it kind of breaks down the bonds, allows it to get very flexible. And then as it cools, everything hardens back up. So that's how you get that shape to really last all day. Um, so you're going to get more longevity out of your blow dry. And then when you're working through with different working sprays and your hands and all of that, you don't lose the shape of the blow dry. So I'm working my way through the top now. We've worked our way through the sides. Um, same thing on the top. What I'm doing is working from the part to the heavy side. So I'm working kind of like a diagonal forward um, section all the way through. Same thing though with both brushes. And then when I get to the very front part, then I start brushing everything forward because if I'm working that brush forward, it's gonna give me more volume right in the front of the hair. So this was all about creating those light layers, taking out a lot of density in, um, in a high density head of hair. So you wanna have more volume because that what that's gonna do is kind of bring those layers to life. So over directing everything the opposite direction that she's gonna wear it, finish it up with Bricado medium hold hairspray, then take out the pin curl clips. Um, you can work your hands through the hair. You can see how uh, nice the curl is held in there. And then I just kind of finish it up, polish it with a curling iron. It's a large barrel curling iron, works really well. So I hope you guys like this cut. Definitely let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And there you go. All right. So what'd you guys think of that one? Uh, I love I, I love the end result of it. Um, that's definitely a salon friendly cut. So if you guys were looking for that, then we hit it. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. Um, maybe I'll give this to my Sambia mannequin to preserve her length. That's a good one. It's a good call. Um, all right, cool. Uh, looks like all of you guys liked it. Uh, how'd you enjoy the show? Let me know that. Did you like this show? Um, sorry for the technical difficulties in the middle of it. I'm going to splice it all together and it will be on the app. Uh, later on today, probably in a little bit. Um, but I'll splice the two halves of the show together so you guys can watch it in full again. If you missed any of it, if you're just jumping on now, um, you can definitely watch it later. 
I'll be live every day this week at 12 o'clock Eastern time, uh, noon. So we'll have some lunch, learn some education and, uh, just enjoy it. So, uh, thanks Johnny, Johnny Livingston, uh, on the show today. Um, thank you to Ryan Teal for being the guest today. Uh, I, I know for a fact, um, I got a couple guests coming up this week that I think you guys are going to enjoy. Um, one of them, Ricardo Santiago from, uh, Joyco is going to be on the show, uh, this week. So that should be really fun. Um, who else do you guys want to see on the show? Uh, I can always give them a shout, uh, and see if they want to come on, see if they have education to share. Um, but I, I love having the guests. Do you guys enjoy that? Let me know in the chat as well. Um, do you like when I bring people on here? Uh, today was definitely more my education uh, and not so much the other brands. Uh, did you guys like that? Um, is there any brand education that you would like to see? Tag them in the comments um, because I, I'd love to reach out to them and see. Um, men's cutting is something that I'd love to like partner up with somebody that has great men's education. So if any of you guys know anybody out there that you enjoy, watching their education, let me know. Cause I'd love to get them on this show as well. Um, 2 AM in Australia. When you go live, Jess, you're a trooper. I appreciate that. Uh, you're on every day, so you don't sleep. Good job. Um, how is the industry in Australia? Let me know. Uh, what's going on there? I uh, love your education. I take a little piece off every cut. Awesome. Thanks so much. Please, great at men's cuts. Ali Ray Salon. All right, why don't you send me uh, anybody that you know is great at men's cuts. Subject line, men's cuts. Uh, email me, matt at freesaloneducation.com and uh, just give me their information or your information or whatever. Uh, but you have to have tutorials, obviously. Um, you have to have the ability to create tutorials because if you don't, then it's hard for me to do it um, remote like we've been. So... Uh, they have to be the ability to create tutorials and, you know, have an internet connection. That's it. And we'll get you on the show. Um, Keon, that's true. Johnny, good call. Um, and I think he's been creating some stuff too. So I'll have to reach out to him. Uh, I did reach out to him to be a guest on the show, but I haven't, uh, but we never coordinated a date, but he does, he is putting tutorials out. So that'd be cool to, to reach out to him. All right, cool. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in, being a part of the show. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all of the um, the like the love and the you know support of it and everything. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying making it every day and just having something to create and, and come up with. Um, one qu one other question, uh, and you guys can put it in the chat. When we get back to normal and we're back in the salon, what day? Like what time during the day would be the best to watch a show like this? Would it be in the morning, uh, earlier? Would it be at noon and you could watch it later if you wanted or uh, evening time is tough for me. So, um, so I'm thinking like morning, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, so we'll see, but let me know, uh, what you think. And Johnny's saying he'll do a tutorial. So Johnny, you should do that. Um, I would love it. Anybody that wants to create a tutorial and then send me a message, um, and tag me in that tutorial or whatever, and you want to get it on this show, I would love to show it. And I'd love to have you on as a guest. I don't care who you are, what your following is. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as the education is good, uh, and the intent is good, you're welcome on this show for sure. So, uh, so Johnny, I mean, and Johnny, I obviously would have, I've already had your work on here. Um, <laughs> I should have had you on as a guest when I did that, but if you want to create something, then I'd love to have you on. Um, Morning is good. Cool. Love that. Same time. Love that. Morning would be better for Jess for sure because it's 2 a.m. at her house. Uh, weekend is better. I, I'm doing it every day. Every day. Monday through Friday. No weekend. My weekend's for my family. Uh, and I'm trying to keep that normal. So, um, so yeah, every day. Monday through Friday. Right now it's 12 Eastern because a lot of us are out of work and I just feel like that's, it's got a good flow to it. I like the afternoon feel and it's not too early on the West coast, which is kind of nice. It's only 9 AM there. So that's nice. Uh, and it's only 2 AM for Jess, uh, in Australia. So, all right, cool. Um, I would watch later. So you decide, cool. Perfect time for me. Agreed. Cool. All right, guys, you're the best. 
make sure you download the FSE Now app. Here it is. Uh, go take a look at it. A lot of you guys that are on here right now know what it is. But if you don't know what it is, go check it out, please. Here it is. Another cool thing is this is the prototype right now, but let me see here. actually, let me find somebody that has a cool profile in here. Somebody that has a gallery. It says Stephanie has one. Maybe it's not loading. So. What we're going to do, uh, just to sh share with you guys, so the update on the app, you can now look at stylist profiles on the app and you can see their work. So their work will come up in a gallery. I don't have work on there. But um, also, there's all these cool buttons on the bottom. So if you want to upload your work, if you want to watch education, you just click the education thing there. Uh, my internet's slow because I'm on the air. But um, you can go through your education here. Um, all of your notifications, your likes, all of that stuff will show up here. And then you've got your news feed with everybody's work showing up and you can comment and write. And now when you get a comment on your photo uh, or your work, then you get an alert about it. Or if a client sends you a message through Stylus Locator, you'll get a, an alert about it uh, on the app, which will start the communication better because as of right now, no one knows when they get a comment. So um, step by step, we're making it happen. Uh, and it's really uh, super fun on there. So um, that update is coming soon. We're, there was a couple of things that I didn't love about it. So obviously we're not putting it out until it's ready. Uh, I was hoping over the weekend we were going to get all finalized, but just a lot of back and forth. So uh, the update's coming and I'm glad you guys are liking the app. And I love seeing everybody's work on here. Like when I pull it up and I just see new stuff constantly, uh, I love it. So, so keep that coming. Um, yeah, keep it coming and, uh, download the app. It's free. It's completely free. Uh, and you create a profile, share your work. You watch education. All these videos go up there. So I hope you like it. All my hair school class downloaded your app. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. Appreciate that. Uh, Tara, great show. Thank you. Um, cool. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I really, uh, Again, appreciate you. Appreciate the support of Free Salon Education always. And I uh, can't wait to be back here tomorrow live with you guys again. What do you want the show to be about? Uh, let me know that uh, in the comments um, so that I can start figuring it out. Also, you can text this phone number right here uh, at any time. I get your text. I see them. Um, and I, I try to load up the show based on those requests as well. So send them my way. Can't wait to see them. Uh, what do we say at the end of this show? It's going to be a great day. Enjoy your day, guys. It's going to be a great day. And I'll see you on the next Chop show. It, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. See you guys. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way, it's gonna be a great day, chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it, let me show you.